everyone. Welcome back to Linux Weekly, Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, and talk about some of the fun things going on in the year of 2023. That's right. First episode, and we are back. Yes. Do you think it's going to be another great year for Linux, Joe Bryan? Oh, absolutely. With, uh, I, I think with uh, Valve and the Steam Deck at the helm, <laughs> we're going to get get lots of uh, updates to Steam OS. We're going to get a new uh, Steam Deck. There's going to be, uh, we're going to get a more rusty kernel. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> you know what? Lots of innovation. It, it's going to be interesting is what it's going to be. There's yeah. no way around that. I got a bunch of things planned for this year um, that I'm looking at with absolute dread as they start stacking up. Like, but I'm going to get them all done. It's going to be a fun time. And speaking of fun times, last mm-hmm. week, it wasn't last Wednesday, we were off due to holidays, but yeah. that Thursday I did a live stream of the rectangle build, which, Woo-hoo. you know, against my better judgment, I built a PC and installed Linux on it live on the air. That's currently up for patrons if you want to go watch that, or if you're a Twitch sub, uh, you can go back and watch the VODs. And it went reasonably smooth. We ran into some problems. We ran into some problems. It was such a tiny build. It was a seven Mm -hmm. liter case. (laughs) And um, the size constraints were such as, here's a little 80 millimeter, 15 millimeter wide fan would not fit because I dared I dared to try to plug in a SATA hard drive. There was not enough clearance if you plugged a SATA hard drive wow. connector into the front. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so fine. I'm going to, uh, I ordered an NVMe, which will hopefully be here today as is tradition. That's going to show up. And so tomorrow we're going to install that and we're going to swap out a fiber optic card because I didn't put the one we were testing back and forth because it wouldn't initially pick up the fiber card. Turns out it was a fiber switch because it likes to do that sometimes and I had to restart everything. And we're going to reinstall Debian and, uh, you know, get Steam back up and running. It's going to be a fun time. So stay tuned to that. Uh, I'm going to say maybe 12 o'clock tomorrow. Oh, nice. Maybe. Um, I'm not going to make any super promises on that. We're just going to work with it because that's kind of impromptu. I was like, you know what? I might as well. I want to finish it. You know, yeah. have a finality thing. Um, playing around with a bunch of stuff. Audio wise, I'm I am working. If you follow me on Mastodon or if you follow me on Twitter, you'll find out that I did not set the um, browser source, Jill. Oh, That's what yeah. you'll find out. Okay. And I'll be like, oh man, <laughs> why didn't you do that? Then I'm like, because I wasn't paying attention. I was I was having too much fun. So <laughs> there we go. <laughs> now that I've done that, um, I'm working on a quick and dirty guide for making podcasts on Linux with Reaper. So I got about an nice. hour's worth of footage, and it is. So much to cover. Oh yeah, so yeah. much to, and I'm I've uh. been working to simplify this to like dial it down to the absolute basics. I'm probably going to have to break it into like modules, frighteningly yeah, close to actual <laughs> like education blocks. Um, bear with me on this. We want to get it right. I want everybody sounding as good as possible, or at least get them pointed in the right direction. I want to arm you with the tools and the correct, right way to think about making these Aww. things. Um, just sharing everything I want to know. That's the whole point of doing this, you know, is to do spread Linux education. That's like, uh, been yeah. my fighting force for a long time. And fair warning, audio might be a little bit wonky. Also, Jetsy might be a little bit wonky. But you know what? I was praising Jitsi in the pre-show, Joe. I was. uh, Okay, good. (laughs) The Jitsi Jitsi box did a good job. It did a good job yesterday. Yeah. um, Did a good job on Saturday. Saturday, yeah. We had uh, M. Fox Dog from chat. Mm -hmm. So we were able to have a really good uh, show, Linux Teamcast Weekly, with myself in Athens and Jordan in Toronto and Michael in Australia. We're yeah. still, you know, low latency ish. It's much better than Discord. That's what we were talking about. Because a lot of times, like when we're playing Trackmania, we'll say something and we got to like wait half a second mm-hmm. yeah. for uh, <laughs> Michael to like get back with a reply because of the latency. You know, it's just a physical <laughs> difference. Um, yeah, much better latency with Discord. Yeah, I had a yeah. good time with that. So yeah. Jitsi might be a little bit wonky because I've modified, I've changed the deal. I've modified some things because I'm. 
Every time it updates, you you just got to do that. Things get moved uh, around in the hard. config files. <laughs> and I get grumpy. Yeah. <laughs> How about you, Jill? You're back. Oh, uh, you you uh, yeah. celebrated like 11 Christmases, didn't you? Yes. Lots of them. Except my, the last... The last one we were going to do, I was feeling a little ill, so we cut that one. We're going to do that one at another time. But I did three major Christmases <laughs> with three parts of the family, <laughs> and, but it was actually really wonderful. And uh, to see all the family and be able to get together um, with everyone since, uh, the, you know, we had the pandemic and the lockdowns, still dealing with that, of course, a bit, but. But at least now we can get together. <laughs> so that's the important part. And I want to wish all our viewers and friends and patrons Happy New Year. Woohoo! <laughs> so it was on uh, Sunday, and, and Ven and Michael and, and Jordan were streaming LGC Weekly on New Year's Eve. <laughs> so that was cool. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, ah, I got so many goodies that I can't even uh, show all, all my wonderful goodies here on the show. But I wanted to show a few things that I got. So one is my Steve husband got me these really, really cute penguin, wooden uh, penguins, abstract penguins from Etsy. They're really cute. So I got a set of four of those. Those look flammable. <laughs> And those are going to, you know, go on my, on one of the desks of my computer setups, probably. Since I have four of them, I'm going to spread them around all my different computers. And I also got, Ven, just before the show started, I haven't even had a chance to open these, but they got the Pine Buds Pro, <laughs> the Pine 64 Pine Buds Pro. <laughs> Yay! Oh man, you sold out, man. <laughs> yeah. You sold out with your pro pine buds. I only yeah. listen to pine buds amateurs. Um, yes. <laughs> no, those are cool. That's a nice looking box that came into. Y yeah, it's really spiffy. I can't wait to open them up after the show. And I also got something else in the mail recently that you I got haven't. Got an Atari VCS. <laughs> oh, you see it? <laughs> okay. I got this. <laughs> yes, the Atari VCS. And don't you dare open it or take it out of the box. That's a collector's oh, item. Oh, yeah, no, it, it, it's definitely going to get open now that I'm uh, feeling better. <laughs> I, I'm going <laughs> to play around with it probably today or tomorrow. <laughs> Yay! I'm going to be honest with everybody. I thought about ordering one of those Atari VCSs like that and just putting it in a closet wrapped up. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to sell this in like 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm glad you had a good time. Uh, yeah. Let's go ahead and jump into it, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. First thing of 2023 I want to talk about is undeleting your files on Linux. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this will happen to you. It absolutely <laughs> will happen to you at some point. And you'll go, hmm, you'll find yourself on a Google being uh, DuckDuckGo console typing in undelete Linux tools. And, you know, of course, you're going to run into what my first thing I went to was, which I had installed, was test disk, because I test disk has saved me before. And yes. I know. I know. <laughs> Even Jill in the notes was like, backups, backup, backups. The problem is, is backups won't save you from something that you deleted 30 minutes ago. <laughs> yes, this is true. This is true. Um, and I ran into that and I was like, oh, test disk. I'll just use test disk. That won't be a problem. And of course, I had to Google, like, what was the thing? I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no. Because guess what? It was on one of my XFS drives. Ah, yeah. Test disk and Photorec don't really like XFS. <laughs> don't work at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> at zero. No compatibility with XFS. And I was like, SGI, I would be very upset with you guys. But, you know, XFS is one of those file systems. If you have something formatted, if you have a drive set up with XFS, you have good reason for it. It's the recording drives that I use. Yeah. Um, even like we're recording right now, it's one of those drives because it is dedicated like IO and uh, they're really good for writing large files that are high bit rate. Like this episode right here is going to be like 145 gigs for 30 minutes, plus all the audio stuff that's hitting it. 
So I have my reasons. I'm just trying to save that comment. You know, you should try mm-hmm. ButterFS or EXT4. I did find <laughs> this and it worked. I was very happy about it. This is XFS underscore undelete. This will be in the show notes. Go check out our show notes at LinuxGameCast.com for this episode. And it does exactly what it says on the Dennis command line utility, which you shouldn't have a problem with that since you're already playing around for Linux. And, you know, it only reads, you know, it doesn't do any writing. So there's nothing you, you can't break it more. And uh, it was real easy to set up. Uh, it's got distribution packages for OpenSUSE and, of course, Arch. <laughs> and then I just cloned the Git, set it up. I ran it on the drive and my video showed back up. I was so happy. I was so happy. Oh, wonderful, Vin. Because, Jill, it was one of those things. It wasn't irreplaceable. It wasn't irreplaceable. What I'd mm-hmm. done is I, you know, it was, if you don't know, um, it takes, you know, a couple hours to tear things down and set things up. I'm doing like an overhead shot. You know, if you've watched Interfacing Linux or if you're going to watch the live stream tomorrow for the rectangle is, you know, that takes a couple hours to move things around and set up different cameras and all that. I had recorded an overhead shot for the podcasting thing, and I didn't want to lose an entire day's worth of stuff. Yeah. So this this saved that. It got that for me. Oh, thank goodness. Yeah. And when it comes to video files, they're, you know, large. <laughs> so mm-hmm. it takes some time to back them up, and you can't always back them up immediately after you're recording because you're busy, you know, preparing for your, your next shot. <laughs> so. Oh, poor Ben. <laughs> it was, um, well, like the mezzanine, the stuff I record, like I would need, and you, you see like larger YouTube channels and places like that. They start talking about like their insane asses. Mm-hmm. And they need yeah. them. They yeah, need them. They Even, do. um, you know, if I was responsible because I record in, um, DNX HD, which is you know, that's a lossless format. Yeah. And, you know, it's like recording directly to ProRes for my brothers and sisters out there that are not familiar with DNX HD. And it's still an Avid joint. Once I was done with that, if I wanted to save it, you know, I'd bust it down to like H265 lossless if I ever mm-hmm. needed it, and that would shrink it. But I'm not responsible enough to do that. Once I get the project out the door, Jill, I'd delete, delete that stuff. Why? Because I don't have, you know, a petabyte NAS, uh, which... Yeah. <laughs> admittedly, I think in the long run would save me a lot of time if I could go, oh, if I could just get that B-roll footage that I did from like two years ago on that one episode and I just reshoot the stuff. We do yeah. stuff on a budget here. That's how yeah. we roll. Well, you're creating too much content to every week. so I'm not it's... creating enough content to adjust, <laughs> justify it. I'm, I, I'm not. I'm not. We, we don't have like a production line here. It's like I sit down and I, I try to keep things backed up. Usually... Usually I got things backed up like on an SD card from whatever I'm recording from because I'll just re- put in it's like a low res. But hey, XFS underscore undelete works in that rare awesome. occasion. Uh, moral of the story, don't format your drives in XFS. Yeah. <laughs> there he yeah. goes. Or, or maybe do some uh, mirroring. Do, do a couple drives and mirror it while you're recording. Then we run back into that like, those drives are really expensive too. Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> I used to have to do that back in the day with animation. <laughs> so let's talk about something that is returned from the dead for 2023, and it's right and just like pinpoints like yes, yes, this is very exciting. So we have a very important Ubuntu Linux flavor that was actually lost in 2016 that will be able to resurface once again in our classrooms. Edubuntu is back. Yay! So the Edubuntu project had started um, back in 2005 and sadly, due to a lack of contributors, was ended with the release of Edubuntu 14.04 LTS. But this is what's cool. Ubuntu Studios' Eric Eichmeier and his wife Amy, whose background is in education, are the ones stepping up to reboot and revive the spin. This, this is awesome because that, that's one of the best <laughs> distros around. And they, they have a proven track record with being able to package apps and, and keep them updated consistently. So this will be really great. 
And, you know, the aim is actually for, for this release is to take part in the Ubuntu 23.04 release this April. And if all goes well, they're going to reapply to become an official Ubuntu flavor once again. I was just so excited about this news. Uh, for one, uh, Ven, um, actually over the years, and when um, Edu Ubuntu, you know, uh, they stopped development, I know a lot of teachers, organizations, and schools had to rush to find alternative distros to use. And a lot of them used Ubermix, which is actually a very great distro. But it, it took a lot of time for them to transition to a new distro. And, you know, that always has its challenges. So this, this was really awesome news. And they have lots of uh, awesome plans for Edubuntu 23.04, including they'll, they will use the same desktop and apps as regular Ubuntu. There's going to be... A, yes, absolutely <laughs> smart. <laughs> and then a new logo. They'll use Yaru's red theme by default and the default application folders by, by um, education subjects such as math, science, language, an installer based on Ubuntu Studios. Woohoo, of course. <laughs> That's an awesome installer. And curated software meta, meta packages ba based on age and age of, of, of the kids, whether they're, you know, preschool, elementary, or high school. And a meta installer to quickly remove groups of irrelevant applications. Meta uninstall. Yeah. Meta. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Thank you for correcting me, Van. A meta uninstaller. And th this is really nice because you remember back in the day, you could get a live um, CD or DVD of Edubuntu, but it also came as a series of packages that you could just install directly in Ubuntu, much like Ubuntu Studio does. <laughs> So it's it's nice to have an un, a quick uninstaller to remove all all those uh, applications if you don't need them. And this is just amazing. I was so happy. That's pretty cool. This. Um, <laughs> I'm just happy to see this. Anything when it comes to like yeah. Linux, because Linux is the perfect uh, software for like a foundation for educational software because it's yeah. never going to licenses are never going to change on you, and you're always going to be able to use it, and you don't have to worry about you know up. You know, you can keep what you want to do. And I'm just so happy that this project is mm -hmm. back and back with some gusto, too. Yeah, absolutely. With some great people behind it. In fact, right now, I am on Ubuntu Studio <laughs> with XFCE. So, oh, yay. Ubuntu <laughs> Studio. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know if I've. Wait, oh, wait. I think I've tried Ubuntu Studio like way, way back in the day. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's mm -hmm. good for people that are, um, you know, I, I don't know. Hang on, let's, let's take a look at Ubuntu Studio. What's it currently looking yeah. like these days? So in, anyways, I, I often recommend it for my students because it has, you know, a Krita, a GIMP, and, and Blender installed by default. So it's, it's just a great, uh, Caden Live, it's, okay. it's a really good introduction to, you know, um, open source uh, video and audio software. Also, uh, um, it has all the jack tools and it comes with all that stuff, which is nice. All right. Yeah, I'm taking a look mm -hmm. at it right now. I haven't looked at Ubuntu. Jill said that and I'm like, man, I haven't looked at Ubuntu Studio in a <laughs> long time. Long time. <laughs> look, at, yeah. look, at, look at their slick website. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Now it uses KDE Plasma, too. I'm still on XFCE. <laughs> oh. Well, it's a shame we we're unable to switch our desktops in Linux. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I never bothered installing the the, the, the KDE version, although this I like KDE, but I want an XFC for stability. <laughs> a long-running joke I have. It's like, oh, man, I want to change my desktop. I better install this other distribution. People, you can change your desktops no matter what distribution you're running. Yeah. And if you don't Absolute, know anything, if you're new absolutely. to Linux, there's your pro tip right <laughs> there. So. What do we have up next? Ooh, that's right. We got to talk about um Yeah, Henry. speaking of multimedia. <laughs> right? Linux. Um, yeah. Henry, you know it, you love it. I use it. Jill's used it. You've probably used it at home. You know, transcoding. Um, you need to convert the video from one type to A to B to bust it down. You need to make YouTube videos. You want to make videos for your TikToks. Yeah, I've, it's got a TikTok sighting. Like everything <laughs> else, man. 
it's got, you know, it's even got settings for Discord. You want to share video, you know, to keep it under that eight megabyte limit. Wow. Mm -hmm. This is a big, big announcement because they finally added AV1 video encoding support. Hardware. <laughs> Yay. Encoding. Now, currently, this only works for the Intel Arc series. We don't have support for the AMD cards or the, you know, the new series of AMD or the 40 series of NVIDIA. But it's officially in the break. I'm happy to see mm -hmm. this. AV1 is the future that um, HEVC H.265 has completely deprived us of, which I'm very, very happy to see. Um, I'm still waiting on a piece of hardware that can encode AV1 because I'm NVIDIA. I'm not spending yeah. $1,000 on a video card. <laughs> AMD. I'm not spending yes. $999 on a video card. That's not even quit, quit trying to make that, that, that's cool or something. That's still not cool. Jill, what are your thoughts <laughs> with this though? Um, are you excited? Well, I, I am. I am. I, I think their NVIDIA and AMD uh, support hardware encoding support is coming. I, I just have that feeling. <laughs> so yeah, handbrake. Uh, thank you for the AV1 support. And you have NVENC HEVC 10-bit encoder support as well. And the H2.65422 profile for video toolbox encoder on Apple silicon support <laughs> so that is awesome supporting the apple silicon yay <laughs> apple's kind of weird um, especially with the m series processors because you will run into situations uh where those will just outperform x86 mm -hmm. especially when it comes to encoding so you know yeah that like that's going to be a strange one there's a not unreasonable future where you have like a bunch of uh, like mac minis like m series m2s and ones or m11s whatever they're at the time as like render farms especially once we get everything figured out on the linux side with them yeah good work everybody involved with handbrake happy mm -hmm. to see it i'm waiting for you know av1 support that that's the only thing that has me remotely interested it had me interested in the you know latest arc card and mm -hmm. i can't get excited i've never been excited about buying an nvidia card never have as much mm -hmm. as you would love to have your fanfic about like, oh, I love NVIDIA. So Team much. Green. Yeah. <laughs> no. mm. Nope. Not even a little bit. Um, I begrudgingly purchase. I'm not excited at all about the 40 series. I just think that pricing is completely out of whack and AMD is no better this time. You know, I expected yeah. better from AMD. But, um, but it, <laughs> that, it, it's good that it's there. Um, but I think, unfortunately, there's only about 12 or 13 of us excited about AV1 hardware encoding. It's going to get interesting when we are able to start streaming. Then I'm going to look into it a little bit more, especially when Twitch lights yeah, up the ability absolutely. to ingest AV1. So, yeah. speaking of streaming, though, mm -hmm. you might know, um, if you happen to have the cable TV, it doesn't matter who you have, really, if you have um, Spectrum or if you have Comcast or other providers in North America, in the United States, I should say, you usually get a ability for like to watch stuff on demand and streaming. Unless you run Linux, unless you run Linux, because yeah. man, like in the old days, <laughs> like in the old days, uh, Xfinity just does not work on Linux out of the box at all. Like not even all of it. And um, a gentleman wanted to watch it. And as in true tradition, he got to watch it because, hey, you, the quickest way to get uh, insert product here, be it software or hardware, reverse engineered, don't support Linux. Um, mm -hmm. And that, that's kind of what happened. Um, so basically, he set up a system. Um, you know, by the way, this was a completely arbitrary block on Linux, by the way. There was no nothing. This is like old school Netflix used to do back in the day. Like, we just block Linux. Why? Eh, why not? So, okay. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, you're thinking, oh, well, you know, there's a couple of tricks we can do. Let's change the user agent. Nope, that didn't work. So it, yeah. it, it found out that it does work on Chrome OS. So his original plan was to extract Chrome, as, uh, Chrome OS's uh, widevine, uh, the CDM from a recovery in image and load that into Firefox and use that mm. for the Xfinity stream. Didn't work because apparently Google patched glibc with some extra bits. 
he ended up compiling glibc with uh without the glibc abi dt r e l r and it worked mm, it worked nice he made it work and there'll be a link to everything uh yeah, all in all, the whole situation is indeed ridiculous. It shouldn't be that this much hard to access media legally. Um, and he makes the point: this is way easier just to pirate it. it yeah. Absolutely, would have <laughs> I been. know. Um, well, what's so annoying about this is they use Linux on the back end, so go <laughs> figure. <laughs> so you know, back when I was on cable, I had this issue also with the Time Warner app working on Linux. It was so annoying; you had to do hacks <laughs> just to watch your content. <laughs> this is it's stuff like this from way back when, especially if you keep track of the show. Like a decade ago, I was walking around with tablets when tablets were like fancy weird moon devices you're like oh what's that you have a tablet oh and you know people wonder now oh, there's a commodity you can go to amazon and buy a tablet for like 80 bucks i bought it because i wanted to watch netflix and yeah you could not watch netflix on linux like <laughs> yeah it there was just no way to do it it was not possible like unless you wanted to have a vm spooled up to watch netflix in a browser and you know even today even, Even today, today, it's 720p. Well, you got to do the hack. You got <laughs> to use the, the hack, wide yeah. light and to get anything over 720p, which is still yeah. ridiculous. And, you know, that's why I've went to like tablets for media consumption. Because of junk like this, um, I wouldn't have bothered, but I'm glad somebody did. And yeah, it's ridiculous. In 2023, we still have to do stuff like this to watch something that you're paying for, right? Yeah, absolutely. Especially since I, I don't know what they're thinking. Like, oh, you know, Linux is for hackers. Well, if if Windows we really want to hack, hackers. we can't watch. We can't if we can't watch your content. Then how are we else are we going to watch it? We. <laughs> I but, see. They're asking the wrong question, and I brought yeah. this up a couple of times. The question is never, "Am I going to watch it?" I'm not asking you if I'm going to watch it. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm going to watch it. That, that's not a question. That's not a variable yeah. in our discussion. I'm watching <laughs> it. Now, the question is, are you going to let me give you money for it? Yeah. Because if you give me that option and you make it really convenient, Steam. Uh -huh. We're paying Steam, for the service. Yes. <laughs> right. Look at Netflix. You make it really easy. You put the stuff on there I want. And you know what? I'm going to give you money. Why? Because I'm getting older. And I'm lazy and I don't want to, I don't have the time <laughs> yeah. to go digging around finding torrents and stuff like that and download them these days. So it, it's weird seeing antiquated stuff like this trying to fight. And, you know, when we talk about Linux and they talk about piracy, I want someone to show me this mythical place that I've not found in the 30 years of mainlining penguins. Yeah. I want you to show me this hive of scum and villainy where all of the pirated linux software and the pirated linux games sit so i can visit it that one time because i've never seen it yeah same same here ben i mean i mean the the you want pirated all, all software their... jill yeah. it's gonna be windows software you want pirated exactly. games jill windows games absolutely absolutely ven and you know darn it you know all your developers you know whether it be on netflix or amazon prime they're again. They're using Linux on the back end, and they complain because they can't uh, they can't test their software on the platform they are developing on. <laughs> what moon universe are we in? <laughs> it's uh, thing, things. Fortunately, they are changing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Thank goodness. And you know, we are paying. Paying. You know, we're paying for Netflix. We're paying paying for Hulu. You know, we're paying for all the things and. I, I just want to watch it on all my devices. That's not a hard ask. <laughs> it is. And it, 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 admittedly, <laughs> like watching video, like streaming video on desktop, it, that, that's kind of an edge case these days. But hey, I, that option should be. There shouldn't be any artificial yeah. blocks because reasons. And Yeah. And, and in creating those artificial blocks, they're actually forcing you to hack. And 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 no to no get that, it, that, that, you know? that's a pirate's excuse now. Joe. Yeah, <laughs> but you know you're twisting my arm, man. Yeah. See, it, it, you don't understand. If I don't watch this thing, I'll die. 
Yeah. No, no, you won't. Uh, no, yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll feel really sad. I'm like, that's cool. But quit twisting my arm. Yeah, that, that, that's. Yeah. That's, I, I can't back up that particular. <laughs> like, no. I'm, be, I'm, be, I'm being I forced like everything to everything legitimate. Yeah, I, I, I am happy to pay for anything. You know, um, I was happy when we moved from Napster to starting to pay for our music because I was, you know, that, that goes to the oh, I know, wasn't. creators. I was t- no, no, I was a broke teenager. I was a broke college kid. I wasn't happy yeah. about any of that. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm I'm not a hypocrite, man. I mean, what's special with like media? It's easy for me to say like games and software because again, been running Linux for thirty years. There's no pirate sites for Linux games and software because yeah, there's, it's few and far Non-existent. between. Non-existent. Yeah. Right. Pretty much. And yeah. <laughs> I can't say that anymore with the game side of things, and you know, Linux software, like every piece of Linux software, I got a license for it. I'll show you. Um, but you know, back when I, I was in university. I mean, I was broke, man. I didn't have any money. And I was grateful that we had things like Napster. But, you know, then later on in life, I don't have when time. you can afford it. I don't have time yeah. I don't, to worry about your quality. Oh, did I get a good download of something? And like, I don't even <laughs> download stuff anymore. I just stream everything. But, like, I want something there. I want it on demand. And I want it to sound good or look good. And it to, you know, hopefully be there next time I go back to watch it. But, you know, hey, welcome to 2023. Speaking of 2023, let's talk about mm-hmm. 2022. Oh, yeah. So uh, this is something cool. Uh, So would you like to win a desktop workstation? Yep. Well, yes. (laughs) The fine folks at System76 are giving one away as a holiday gift and a New Year's gift to you. So PNY, NVIDIA, and System76 have actually teamed up to give away a System76 Thelio Mira workstation with an NVIDIA RTX A 4500. Woohoo! So check out the Watch to Win contest for details on entering. There are 16 ways to enter, and the deadline for entry is January 31st. And when I checked yesterday, there were 12,778 entries. So actually, your chances are good. That's not as high as I <laughs> that it could be, although that may have changed today. <laughs> Well, you no, know, you know you're going to get the ones out there that are like, oh, you can put Windows 11 on it. Um, but you know what? Um, I'm no better. I'm like, I'm just going to take the A4500 out of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, so this system is actually has an in- Intel uh, Core i9. 121,000 entries right now. Oh, okay. Okay. So it has gone up. Good. I, I knew it would. <laughs> Very, very nice. i9 13900K. Um, how much memory? 32 gigs of RAM. That's, yeah. a, that's, a, that's a little thin for a workstation, but I mean, yeah. it's there. I mean, for the price, you can't beat it. Uh, yeah. And it's one of those things that's that where you, you know, you opt in and you like and subscribe and you do all the clicks for the extra things and the gleam. <laughs> yeah, that gleam types thing. So, yeah. I, mean, I mean, go for it. If you want, yeah. I mean, it never hurts. It could be one of those things that I remember one time I. And we're talking like 2002, 2003, I'd entered an AMD contest uh, just randomly and to win like the, a motherboard and CPU. And like six months mm. later, I get an email and I thought it was spam. Fortunately, I didn't delete it. And I won. That was like the one time I've ever won anything. Oh, wow. That's cool. Like, oh. And uh, so uh, what else do we have? Because this is part of System 76's uh, yeah. a year in review. And you know what? They, they've been a good, good member of the Linux community. So I want, I want to just like. Absolutely. Talk to uh, let Jill tell you about some of the things they've been yeah. up doing. Yeah, yeah. So they really did have an awesome uh, year in 2022, and uh, not the least of which was the launch light and the launch heavy keyboards were released. And in case you missed it, check out my quick review of the launch heavy keyboard in the intro on LWW number 356. And so we got new hardware, the Thelio desktop has now has swappable accents so you can customize it to your color and liking you can create your own panels for the front or uh, uh, buy some of the ones that they have made already like of course uh, wood accents or you know pink or or blue and uh, the big release of uh, pop os 22.04 lts came out and i am loving it i have it installed on about four different machines right now including one my gaming rig behind me and uh, the transition uh, for the Cosmic Desktop to the Rust 
code is underway and we're going to see, I think we're going to see the launch of that this year. <laughs> They've been working hard on transitioning from using GNOME and creating their own uh, desktop and making it all based on Rust, which is awesome. The Rust coding language. It'll be fascinating to watch. Yeah, it really is. This is exciting also because we, you know, in past episodes I have mentioned with the Linux kernel getting more rusty code, this should help make uh, Cosmic DE uh, desktop created in Rust run even faster because then they'll be working but, together. Oh, yeah. We have two slow things working together oh, to make no. them slower. No. It's, it's going to be Let's talk about the slowest part of the efficient. Linux kernel. Rust. <laughs> No. Uh, it, yes, I can prove yeah. that with math. Oh, well, but it's more secure and very stable. It, it's so. memory safe, but it's also yeah. slow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, Thelio and uh, actually Thelio Major joined Thelio Mira in offering now an AMD Ryzen 7000 series processor options alongside 13 gen Intel processors. So lots of major things happened. Yeah, a bunch of stuff that went on. Um, you know, I, I'm glad we got System 76 around. You know, yeah. love them or hate them, just be glad that they're there. I know it's a weird thing to do, but they have been good stewards and, you know, promoting Linux and never had Absolutely. And, and to have a homegrown, you know, company that, that you know, makes Linux laptops. They're with, trying. I mean, they yeah. started out like, hey, let's Desktops. just do like build white boxes, go back in on the Wayback Machine, yeah. look at some of the early stuff from System76. Like, I can respect that type of, um, like, just starting with that and building to where, you know, they're machining their own cases and stuff along those lines, which is mm -hmm. very impressive. And again, yeah. you know, I'm looking at, you know, even me, I, I look at, I, I give my hard time about the Atari wood grain, but, you know, I do it lovingly. Yeah. And, you know, creating, <laughs> Creating your own desktop manager, I think, is completely bonkers. But it's I'm all amazing. for it. I'm like, it's mm, amazing. It could be an incredibly bad idea, but hey, at least you're trying. You're doing something different. You're doing something new, and they do oh. contribute back to the open source community. So yeah, absolutely. Linux is first. This there is you go. Um, we need wood grain keyboards. <laughs> oh yeah. So. Yeah, with the uh, launch heavy, I, I could have gotten uh, keycaps for it that were wood grain, fake oh, wood grain. That, they do that, make those. That would be insufferable. <laughs> Man. <sighs> so if you'd like to help us continue being insufferable, you can do that. Head over to LinuxGameCast.com. We got a support button. We have Patreon. We got merch. We got PayPal donations. We got wish lists for the studio, for Jordan, for Pedro, for Jill. Uh, we take that. Bitcoin's completely crashed. If you send that in, uh, it's no value to it, but I will con convert that into studio equipment. Best way to support us, patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. We got a bunch of different levels, membership levels, chair links, death notes, sea monsters, and above. Unlocks all kind of cool stuff that we do, um, up to and including, if you like this show, there's a full live and uncut version of it produced just for you and your custom mm -hmm. RSS feed. You get access <laughs> to our Discord invites to things like jordan's going to be rocking and rolling tomorrow with our patrons in borderlands 3 that'll be live here on twitch at 7 30. i'm going to be doing a live stream it lets us do stuff like that pick up hardware pay for the hosting you ever notice like hey if you go to download mm -hmm. an episode of linux Teamcast, it's not at some fire site or wherever data of hoovering thing no we hosted ourselves pay for it out of pocket yeah. so i've been doing that for 10 years mm -hmm. it ain't cheap um mm -hmm. and yeah a couple of things we're going to be sticking together this year Unless something goes incredibly wrong, we're going to be building an Epic PC this year. And that is going to be, it's a horrible idea. And it's so horrible. I love it. it I'm excited about it, Jill. But I do Aww. want to thank Ogi <laughs> One for increasing his Patreon pledge. Hakeem yes. for increasing his Patreon pledge. And if, I, I do believe George, because I think George has been fighting the good fight to become a patron for the better part of a week. I think he's having an issue with... um. Yeah, yeah, I, I've seen getting, his name getting pop it, in yeah, and out. It's set yeah. up and like, <laughs> notifications and like, thank you so much. That means the world to us. Um, also, uh, if you want to watch last week's uh, rectangle build, that is up for patrons right now. I think that'll go out um, this Friday if you want to be patient about it for the general public. If you want to nice. see that, because you know I'm not real big on throwing stuff behind paywalls, but we do got to pay the bills. So check this out. 
store.linuxteamcast.com. We got merch. Um, I'm going to mm-hmm. be bringing back the Linux Weekly Daily Wednesday t-shirt. Yay! It's redesign, coming back. I'm yeah, sure. I'm doing redesigns <laughs> and stuff. Uh, hopefully by the end of this month, I'll have that together. The latest thing is, of course, the Frank hoodie. If Ooh, you know Frank. It's beautiful. Um, our, I like uh, the, fr- the, the Frank uh, t- uh, uh, razor tee. A uh, razor tank razor top tea? for a <laughs> razor tea, <laughs> razor tank top for ladies. I gotta grab that. <laughs> oh man, and we do have our new slogan, Linux Teamcast. Not a yeah. cult. Probably. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> That's great, man. <laughs> Show your support. All that stuff is priced uh at effectively no margin because if you want to like advertise our stuff, I want you to be able to do it on the cheap. I get notifications all the time. Anytime they increase the price at uh teespring you're like you need to raise the price because you won't be making any money i'm like well can i make negative money like no I'm like okay i'll change it back to break even thank you for your <laughs> support everybody it is awesome we do appreciate it now the last little bit of the show we like to talk about raspberry Pis or just embedded yeah. computing sbcs and this week we want to talk about security um home alarm systems mm-hmm. i've had places over the years with different types of home alarm systems built into them and um, by that i mean i've had them and have never had them activated i think once i called i'm like hey what's this thing called like for monitoring and it i was like 27 dollars a month i'm like what do you do nothing okay yeah so i just give you 27 dollars and i feel good I'm like yeah yeah pretty much uh we'll, we'll call the cops I'm like cops aren't gonna do anything when you show them <laughs> like they might get a couple <laughs> hours later i mean so this guy um thomas decided to build his own home security system using raspberry pi and he went all in he went and this is amazing i was reading through this and it just keeps going going. (laughs) yeah (laughs) this table of contents like we're we're talking about like this is the type of uh, person that i get along with is like this this is engineering right here this is I got a plan laid out for everything I'm going to be doing from all the way to the end. And he said, it took about a year to put all this together. And I've never considered doing a DYI security system. But Thomas, you did. And, you know, to keep things interesting, he decided to use a Raspberry Pi 3 at the heart of the system, mainly because it had an Ethernet uh, port on the back. And he was able to use that because he believes, much like most of us, if you can hardwire it, hardwire it. Um, Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) And I got to chuckle at this. He's like, oh, yeah. And by the way, I needed a security system that I could SSH into. And I'm like, of course you yeah. do. That makes perfect sense. I have a camera that I can tell that into. So why not, brother? Um, so this is a full-on security alarm system. And it, it supports hardwired and the MQTT sensors. Mm-hmm. So if you have like the, the wireless stuff that should sync up, shouldn't be a problem. And it does the multiple MQTC alarm panels uh, with like set states. It's got a battery backup built into this. And of course, Home Assistant integration integration just works with the auto discovery, picks everything up. He goes through the entire build here. It's so yeah. cool. He's got a good hub page. It's amazing. With all of his modifications. Look at that. Some resistor stacks. Um, oh man, he's using wow. through hole resistors. That's, that's, I like to see that. Why? Because I'm lazy like that too. And I hate doing surface mount stuff. Um, this oh here we go here's an early test of the python script with a raspberry pi zero oh yeah he tried to do it initially with a raspberry pi zero uh and it was not powerful enough yeah Uh, just didn't have the there it is mounted in the the, uh box i mean that looks serviceable i mean especially if you built it you know i mean just look at all the money he's saving i mean i know I know here in Los Angeles to have a home security system, I know people who spend up to $200 a month on that service. <laughs> so it's just insane. And, you know, they have proprietary software and this is so nice because you can use, you know, the open source home assistant, which is awesome. And uh, this is just really wonderful. <laughs> Amazing. Look at, look at, he even did the, the dial pad. <laughs> Get motion detectors. I mean, so, you know, you, you got to say like the time investment, the DY is like, do you do this or do you buy a dog? Um, no. Yeah. <laughs> I, either or. I, I like this. I, I just love the amount of detail in this. And I love when people just go all out. Yeah. There's like motion. Um, using the Bosch PIR mm-hmm. motion sensors. Uh, 
That's so fun. That's so fun. This is excellent. Look, there's a, I wouldn't look at home, home assistant, home assistant has gotten Oh, it's gotten really fancy. It's very incredible what you can do now with Home Assistant. I've thought about setting it up myself to control lights and whatnot when we're gone. Simple things like that, but it'll do really complex things too. (laughs) It's amazing. (laughs) It looks like it looks nice. Maybe you can even rig it up to like make mannequins dance in front of your windows in case you're (laughs) left home alone. Oh, yeah, we did one time on LWW cover a home assistant, a robot, remember, that that would uh, guard the house? <laughs> that was like, we talked about it a couple of years ago. That was pretty amazing. Sounds... He controlled it with home assistant. <laughs> Goodbye, pen. My pen decided to jump out of my hands because why? I was fiddling with it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> All right, everyone. That's fun. We got to run. Speaking of running, a little bit long. We'll see you next week. Before we get out of here, mm-hmm. let's roll some credits. Aww. Thanks, people. Thank you all. Thanks to all our wonderful patrons. There's supposed to be credits there. There they are. There they are. Whew. That was Linux good. Gamecast like... Original Series with your hosts, Ven Stone and me, Jill Bryant. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> and we have lots of people to thank, including our, our advisors, advisors Omega and our Theron. <laughs> <laughs> and of our course, all of our producers. executive producers, Pebble, you know it, Hack and Barbara, <laughs> Super Death Star. Yeah. Strider, what is that supposed to be? Is that our what sea you monsters, do? Darkwing, Nubbin, Vera Tenuta, Justin, Treggy, our Death Notes, lots of Stevens, including <laughs> my Steve husband, <laughs> Cherlings, too many for me to. It's to a name. line of purple <laughs> awesomeness. That's what our Cherlings are. So yeah, they're amazing. We have hey, so everyone. many awesome patrons. Keep being <laughs> awesome. Get out there, do something crazy with Linux, and uh, we will see you again next week. Come watch us live if you get a chance. Yeah. 3 p.m. on Wednesdays. Bye-bye. Love you all. Mm-hmm. <laughs>